Well, let me say greetings to you, my brothers and my sisters. We are honored to come before you on this blessed day, realizing that the God that we serve is a mighty good God, and we want to give God the glory and the praise for all that he has done and all that he will do. Today we are preparing to engage in a new study, and uh, we are going to be in the book of Leviticus, the book of Leviticus, and we ask if you would turn in your Bible to the book of Leviticus. Uh, this is the walk through the Bible, traveling through the Bible uh, series where we read every book of the Bible, chapter by chapter and verse by verse, and we study the Word of God from a topical perspective, nothing deep. Uh, you don't have to worry about getting out a lexicon or even um, a transliteration of Hebrew and Greek uh, to study with us. The Bible said, blessed are they that read. And so if you just read it, I promise you, it will bless your socks off. We ask if you would um, to take out time and and share this with um, your various groups. Uh, share it with your sorrow and click the share button there and share it with family and friends and let them know that we are live, living, and in color. That's right, here at the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. We also want to give God praise for those who are testifying of the goodness of God and how God is restoring them and keeping them. We're praying for, that is correct, the current status of our nation as it relates to the government shutdown and the challenges of the government shutdown and those that are uh, impacted by it from housing to food to clothing to salaries, um, you name it, um, services, um, other amenities such as benefits. Um, we're praying earnestly. We're praying earnestly because we do realize that prayer still works. And so we're calling on you, my brothers and sisters, to pray with and for us as we continue I want to give a shout out to my HBCU of School of Choice, Simmons College of Kentucky, there in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, go Falcons, go Falcons, yeah, go Falcons, Simmons Nation. Thank God for you and give a shout out to the students and, and all who are serving in those capacities. Uh, staff and volunteers, um, we thank God for you, trustees, we thank God for you and even you. We ask that you would visit AMBC 1840.org. That's right. If you would visit AMBC 1840.org. Our cash out for the church is, of course, dollar sign AMBC 1840. That's right. And for online giving as well, those of you that uh, believe in online giving and uh, the convenience of online giving, uh, we want to encourage you uh, to go to the Givelify app. That's right. And that is G-I-V-E-L, that's right, Givelify, L-I-F-Y dot com. So that's Givelify dot com. And download that app. It is safe and secure. And I promise you, the Lord will bless you real good. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this time and for this study as we now labor in your word to share with this audience near and far of the glorious good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we are learning over and over again that the Old Testament is not only food for our souls, but also in examples for us that we may learn about relationships and we will learn about worship. We 
learn about your attributes and, and how that you, O oh God, minister and, Father God, relate to your people and perform miracles and how to instill principles and values and direction and wisdom and knowledge and how you bring our people together to do a great work and how you will cover us and keep us. So, Father God, it is so rich how you redeem us and how you love us, also how you chasten us. And then, oh God, we see also how you, over and over again, every book of the Old Testament, every chapter, we find Jesus. And we thank you that he lives and sits at the right hand of yours truly, oh God, our Father, which art in heaven, making intercessions on our behalf. So we love you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit dwells within the strong one who comes along to upgird us, to prop us up on every leaning side and to bring to our remembrance the things you would have us to say. Revive us again. Oh God, revive us again. For this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Leviticus, 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 Leviticus is the book. Leviticus is the book. Now, by way of introduction, I think it would be um, to our advantage just to highlight, if you would, I just want to highlight a little bit about Leviticus. I'm not going to really take a lot of time to really dig into the, uh, the introduction of the book. Um, that's not my aim. My aim is to read it and share some insights, okay? But the book of Leviticus, of course, is deemed as the book um, as it relates to the priests and the functions of the priests and the priestly offices. Um, the Levites were the priestly tribe and still are uh, that God had organized and ordained to serve in the temple, okay, to serve in the tabernacle. And they had specific fun functions and duties were assigned just to them, no one else but the Levites, so they were the priests. There was, of course, as you well know, uh, the high priest, which was Aaron. So Aaron, if you would, would be the father of the Levites. He gave birth to the Levites. And every Levite that served, every Levite that served in and under the leadership of Aaron, they either served as direct assistance to him or they served as assistants to those assistants. And so when you look at Leviticus, Leviticus has a lot of rituals, a lot of sacrifices, um, a lot of, um, if you would, organization as it pertains to worship um, because things are shifting, okay? Things are shifting. And so God is giving directives and instructions to the people of God as it relates to worship. Now. Uh, in Exodus, we, we learn, and we're still out learning, how God, um, if you would, redeemed man. Redeemed man. In Genesis, if I can go back further, we learn how man had ruined himself. He had ruined himself. Can't blame it on nobody else but yours truly. <laughs> we, we've done it to ourselves. Uh, so we go from man being ruined he dropped the ball in the Garden of Eden, and he disobeyed God, and as a result of that, sin into the world. So that's the first Adam, okay? So we ruin ourselves. That's what I'm trying to get us to see. Can't blame, quit blaming everything on everybody else. Then you can allow people to ruin you if you chose choose to. But we basically, you know, we basically, you know, we hurt ourselves, okay? Uh, now, of course, there are those who take advantage of people who are um, what you would call a mentally challenged or a little slow of learning, um, and, and shame on those people uh, because you shall reap what you sow. But that is not a relationship to those of us who know better. Many of us know better. Uh, we've been taught better. God has given us common sense. He's given us intellect, a conscience to think, and so and a choice to make. So in Genesis, we find man ruined, the ruin of man, how man ruined himself. Then in Exodus, we find where God steps in and God rescues. He sends 
Moses to tell Pharaoh to let the people go. Moses is the liberator on behalf of the people, which teaches us that the people of God should never be under the leadership of oppression. We should not allow anyone to oppress us, to be a ruler from the perspective of a tyrant uh, over us because God is, is a God of liberation. He's not a God of bondage. He's a God of liberation. And so we found where God said Moses, Moses is the one that leads the people out of bondage, okay? God does the miracle, Moses is the vessel. So now we come to Leviticus. We come to Leviticus, and we come to Leviticus, we shall see man in reconciliation, how God is reconciling himself with man over and over again, the sacrifices that are going to take place, the, uh, the practices, the order, and we also learn in the book of Leviticus that in Exodus, God speaks from Mount Sinai. Now, they're still in the area of Mount Sinai as they're traveling the wilderness, okay? They're still there, but God is no longer speaking from the top of the Mount of Sinai. God will now speak to them from the tabernacle, okay, from the mercy seat. So... When they came to the tent, when they came to the tabernacle, <clears throat> they came to meet God, okay? They came to meet God. And I said in one of my one-minute devotionals, uh, and thank you for those shout-outs, and I pray to God that they are a blessing to you, that when we come to the house of prayer, when we come to church, we come to worship service, we ought to come anticipating meeting God. Instead of eating, greeting, and meeting, and then going back home, Come back to another eat, greet, and meet uh, one another or our personal agendas. I believe if you come with the right attitude, I really do believe this, God will meet you there. Yes, he will. So my prayer every Sunday, every Sunday is a, is a revival Sunday to me. Every Sunday is a celebration Sunday to me. I don't have boring Sundays, amen. I don't have those. I believe that when I come to sh church and worship, I come to meet God and God meets his people there. That's what you see in the book of Leviticus. God is meeting his people at the tabernacle. The tabernacle, uh, they followed all the instructions. Uh, they have done everything according to the T. If they had missed one T or forgot to dot one I, then God was not going to commune with them. Okay? And so we see the the order, we see the instructions, we're going to see uh, the discipline, okay, and how meticulous God is as it relates to worship. Now, this is important, ladies and gentlemen, because I, I, I truly believe that in many cases we come to God and sometimes we, we treat God as if God is some type of genie in a bottle, or some Santa Claus um, that opens up a big bag and just gives us what we want or that God is like a spare tire and the only time that we call on him is when we have a flat when life has us in a place or uh, in a situation where everything is tapped out so to speak and that's when we call on God ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please hear me God is not towards or us God is not <laughs> no, he's not a cartoon fantasy now, God is God, okay? He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the sustainer of all there is. He is uh, the great I am, okay? He's El Shaddai. He's the provider. He's, he is Jehovah God. He is the, you know, the covenant-keeping God. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is spirit, all right? And so we have to be mindful to get the right mindset of who God is, all right? And the more that you begin to understand and develop a relationship with God, the more you understand the approach, hello somebody, uh, to God. You know, you just can't come to God in a way. You just can't do it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and so here we see that in the book of Leviticus, we'll see that. And again, although we don't practice a lot of these sacrifices and rituals that we're gonna read about, However, they do serve as some lessons for us uh, because in this particular book of Leviticus, one has stated that it is one of the greatest books in the entire Bible because all throughout Leviticus, we see Jesus Christ. 
we see a prototype of Jesus Christ. We see his sacrifice. We see his suffering. We see his death. We see his atonement. We see his reconciliation. We see his forgiveness. So all throughout the Leviticus, that's what we see. This is pointing to Jesus Christ. Please don't miss this. Now, the people had an obligation. And oftentimes, we'll place all of the obligation on others. But the people had an obligation, ladies and gentlemen. And we have an obligation before we come before God. Yes, we do. You just can't throw it all on God. We have a part to play. And I'm saying all that to say that uh, this type of Bible study, uh, this type of teaching, uh, is not really attractive. You know, people will click on and click off. Uh, what sales? I tell you what sales today. Uh, most pictures, most motion, um, major motion movie, yeah, that actually become blockbusters. If you'll notice, it is laced with something violent. Please hear me. Something violent it has to be some violence or something that is uh, sensual or product, uh, pr provocative as it pertains to perversion or pleasure or sex it up. It has to be materialistic. Uh, this, this, this world in which we live is slowly but surely drawing us in to become more like the world. And so our appetites and our, our desires begin to shift. And as a people of God, we've got to be careful. Uh, the book of Leviticus, the word Leviticus um, itself, actually means uh, a call to, a call to, all right? A calling to, call to. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is called the call out. <laughs> and God is the one who's doing the calling. We are called to worship him, and we're called out to witness for him. Tweet that. Or I'll put that in X, formerly known as Twitter. Are y'all listening to me? So here in the book of Leviticus, God is very intent. Here's my point. And making sure that the people of God understand that worship is preeminent. It's number one. Uh, you are created to worship God. That's what you that's your main purpose, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, you have, you have to work and do other things, but your main our main purpose for being created, please hear me. If you don't get nothing else out of this study, is to worship God. That's our main purpose, is to worship Him. And all other things fall in place. When you get your worship in line, a lot of other things line up for you. Are y'all listening to me? And so this type of teaching and this type of Bible study, uh, it's not attractive. It's not entertaining. I don't have gimmicks. I don't have a lot of fanfare. Uh, all I have is the Word of God. And I'm going to stick with it because guess what? This is what has brought me almost 35 years now, okay? So <laughs> if it brought me this far, why would I leave it now? And so we see in the book of Leviticus, we're going to see the importance of worship and the order of worship, the attitude of worship, uh, the prerequisites for worship. We're going to see that in the book of Leviticus. So it teaches us again and again the importance of worshiping God. Okay? and how to come before him, and all that is entailed, the interactions of the priests, the animals, the sacrifices for sin, all of that is, is wrapped up in the book of Leviticus. Also, um, another footnote I want to give you, then we're going to read it. It's only, um, if I'm understanding my numbers here, it's only 17 verses in the first chapter. We'll cover that chapter today. Uh, there's something else that I, I want to share with you about the book of Leviticus. The people of God has, have just been delivered from where? Egypt. Somebody say Egypt. Egypt. So they've just been delivered from Egypt. Uh, it's about a year plus now, okay? So they're fresh out of Egypt. You already saw how they acted when Moses was up on the top of the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And he was gone for 40 days and 40 nights. And they said, we don't know what's come of him. So they uh, bamboo, they, they bullied Aaron. Who was left in charge, which tells me you know, a lot of people won't be left in charge, but they don't know how to take charge. Hello, somebody of, as leader. So they, they, they bully him, they manipulate him, they coerce him, they overwhelm him to build a, a cap, uh, a golden cap. He said, well, get your jewelry and your earrings and your necklaces and, and bring it. We're going to melt it down. And the Bible says Aaron crafted 
That's right, made the calf. When Moses came down, he lied and said the people did it. No, basically what Moses, what Aaron said was, well, we just threw all the jury in the fire and ain't out came this calf. That's what he said. Just let out lies. They take responsibility for his actions. That was only 40 days. They had already reverted back to worshiping idol gods. Just 40 days. Now they have, amen, engaged to the place and point where it's well over a year now, going on two years, and now it's time for the, temp the tabernacle to be erected, it's been erected. Now it's time for God to come and commune with them. He's going to speak out the tabernacle to the people of God, and I said that earlier. But here's what I want to really, really, really zero in. God wanted to make sure that his people were witnesses and they lived holy lives. You'll see holy all throughout the Leviticus. Holy, 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 holy. He wanted to make sure that the people of God distinguished themselves from these other heathen nations and other uh, worships of uh, heathen items. No heathen God ever called himself holy. No heathen worship called himself holy. And so God wanted to distinguish them as a holy and a peculiar nation. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? All right. So the church has been called to be a holy nation. Uh, the church has been called to be a peculiar nation, uh, called out of darkness into the marvelous light, okay? And so God was using the people of God to be his witnesses, okay, to heathen nations, to the world around. Now watch this, don't bless you. There ought to be some distinguishing characteristics about you if you claim to be God's child. Yes, sir. That will be something about your principles that are different, your morals, your fundamentals, the choices you make, how you live, how you carry yourself, how you do business. Are y'all hearing me today? In relationships, I can go on and on and on. There ought to be a distinguishing, watch this, a distinguishing personality that resides in you that what? Sets you apart. I didn't say makes you better, but sets you apart. Come out from among them. You know, sets you apart. You're not like them. You know, you, you're not to judge them, but you ought to be an example, hello somebody, of Jesus who is the Christ. We are a reflection of him. And so we are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light. Amen. We are the light. And so God wants to make sure that the people of God don't take on these heathen practices and these heathen religions and all of this idolatry that's going to happen, that's, going to, that's all around them, like it is today, it's all around us. And I, sadly to say, sometimes it's very difficult to really distinguish a person that belongs to Christ versus a person that belongs to the world. Uh, a person that's living for God versus a person that's living, amen, according to their flesh. I mean, it's very challenging today. But Jesus did say you will know them by the fruit they bear. You cannot bear apples you will not bear apples if you are an orange tree. Hello, somebody. Not going to happen. You will not give birth or bear fruit. Watch this. Grapes. Hello, somebody. If, you, if you're a strawberry patch, it's not going to happen. Amen. So he said you'll know them by the fruit they bear. The, the, the challenge we have, some people don't know how to inspect the spiritual fruit because they don't know, haven't been taught about the spiritual fruit. And how that it does, and what characteristics to look for. They don't know. So my, my brothers and sisters, God wanted to make sure in the book of Leviticus, our third book that we've been studying, we're going through the entire Bible, God wanted to make sure that this book, along with all the Old Testament, amen, books, served as in examples to us, to teach us, amen, of the age of grace, in the age of grace, the church, to teach us his pattern, his Characteristics, his attributes, his relationship with his people, and you'll see the, that some that, that many of these characteristics and attributes, many of these principles, do apply to us today. We learn a lot from them. And again, no, we don't have to offer animal sacrifices. Why? Because Jesus offered the ultimate sacrifice. No, we don't have to drain the blood out of animals and pour it around the basin offering. No, Amen. Why? Because Jesus shed His blood. You see where I'm going? No, we do not have to, watch me now, this is going to bless you. We do not have to lay animals on the brazen fire and let them be consumed and then take the ashes, which were holy, by the way, 
and then have a ceremonial holy place or a place of cleansing for these remaining leftovers. Why? Because Jesus finished the work. It is finished. Are you with me? There is no remission or forgiveness of sin without blood being shed. None. And the animals represented an atonement. So what the sinner would do, the, 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 the worshiper would do, the worshiper voluntarily now. This was voluntarily. Nobody twisted their arm. Nobody coerced them. They volunteered, watch this, to come before the priest at the entrance of the tabernacle at the door. That's where the brazen off altar was or the burning off altar was. We already talked about that in the book of Exodus. They would come to the door with their sacrifice. The sacrifice was not dead. It was alive. And when they would come, the Bible is going to teach us here there were procedures. Now, why are they doing this? They're doing this because they're getting ready to approach God, to go and worship God. And they had to confess sin. They had to acknowledge their sin. We live in a time and day now where we justify wrong. I mean, we know it's wrong, but we justify it. We find avenues and venues to make our wrong right. You know, it's no longer, it's no longer wrong, amen. When you say wrong, they say, well, it's not, it's not wrong to be wrong now. It's right to be wrong. Hello, somebody. And, uh, <laughs> and it's wrong to be right. And the Bible says we live in a time in which, you know, we live a day will come and we'll call good evil and evil good. We're in that day, ladies and gentlemen. We are in that day. Nobody's wrong. Hello, somebody. Um, nobody cares. Nobody. I'll do what I want, say what I want, and live with the pain and the conviction and the judgment and justify it and say, oh, well, it is what it is. No, it is not what it is. It's what you created. It's what you made it. That's what it is. And I do realize there are rare occasions where things happen that we did not create. But most of our problems, most of our issues, most of our pain, most, are y'all listening to me? Most of our suffering, most of our heartache, most of our valleys, you know what? We brought it on ourselves. I mean, let's just be honest about it. We brought it on ourselves. Can't blame the black man. Can't blame the white man. Can't blame, amen, the Republicans, the Democrats. Can't blame, no, we brought, a lot of stuff we brought on ourselves. And the uh, old church used to say confession is good for the soul. And so here in the book of Leviticus, you will find where the people of God came before the priests at the tabernacle and they would bring their sacrifices. They would lay one hand on the animal and then they would have the animal killed and the animal's blood would be drained and then the animal would be placed on the altar and when they laid their hand, watch this, on the animal, here's what they were doing, here's in essence what that meant. They were saying, I'm transferring my sin to another. Y'all don't get it. Woo! Y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get it. With the lie I told, I'm going to lay my hand on this animal. And the sin that I committed, I'm, this animal is going to sacrifice itself for my sin. And God, is, God will forgive me and give me another chance to get it right. Now, I did not say that God didn't chastise them because God did do that. You'll see that too. Don't think just because you acknowledge you now there, there's, there's a price, amen, for every wrongdoing. Don't, don't get it twisted. But what I want you to see is that when they brought the animal before the priest in the tabernacle, the tabernacle is like a big tent. Many of you are aware of a tent. I mean, you stayed out, you seen tents, Boy Scouts, whatever, you went out camping, you put up your own tent. They didn't have a building at this time. All they had was a portable tent. And this huge tent, was the place that God would come and meet with his people and he would speak to his people and they would worship God. And, amen. So we find that this animal was the transfer. In other words, my wrong and my sin is now being placed upon this animal. Watch this. Check it out. Is that not a picture of Jesus? Did he not take all of our sin? I know he's not an animal, but did he not take all of the sins of the world? That should have been you on that cross. That should have been me on that cross. Should have been Jesus. But Jesus did it because no one else could qualify. No one else could offer their life for our sin. Jesus was 
sinless, and he never sinned. Hello. He was sinless. He had no sin. He knew no sin. He did no sin. So in order for us to be redeemed, reconciled, brought back into the right relationship with God, someone had to take on our stuff, our mess, our sin. Can I ask a question? How many of you that are listening to me right now, that are watching me right now, uh, even those of you that will play this video back later, we keep it out there for about 30 days, this study. How many of you would actually lay down your life for the sin of just your friend, your concentric circle? How many of you all will be willing to suffer and say, I'm going to give all my life and everything that, that is within me for all of my friends and all of my family? I can't hear nobody out there. The Bible says, greater love hath no man than this, than a man to lay down his life for his friend. The death of Jesus Christ saved us. End of story. When he died, that opened up the avenue for us to be redeemed. Because now the sin has been paid for. Are y'all listening to me? When he died, listen to me. <laughs> when he died, death died. Which means death to the penalty of sin. The penalty of sin required the soul to die. Well, guess what? In Christ, we live. Yeah, that's why it's important to understand this. He died and rose again. He rose for our justification. Yes, he did. He rose for our justification from the grave. So everything he did when he hung out on the cross and sacrificed, it was for our stead, in our stead. It was for us to the glory of God. He did it because it was his father's will. But can I tell you? <laughs> Can I tell you a little bit more? Can I can I add a little something? He did it because he loved us. Oh, yes, he did. What a love. What a love. And so we will see, and still loves us, okay? Now, we will see here in Leviticus again. It's really, from my perspective, a continuation of Exodus. Because <clears throat> we move from, excuse me, the erection of the tabernacle to now the order of and ordinances and instructions for worship in the tabernacle and around the tabernacle. Are y'all listening to me? Holiness, over and over again. You'll see that word holy. We don't talk about that no more. No, you, you won't talk about holy living, right living. We don't talk about that. No, we don't. Do, that's somewhat taboo. We don't want to. We don't talk about holy. Holy living? Really, Rapper? What is a holy way? Oh, a holy roller? Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about living in a way. In which people will know and the world will know that you are God's child. That's what I'm talking about. It means taking a step forward. Holiness means to be separated from. Are y'all listening to me? It means to be set apart for. Are y'all listening? It is consecrated. You live a consecrated life. Which means the life you live now is a life that you seek to what? Please God. You may never satisfy God. You can't satisfy God, ladies and gentlemen. But guess what? You can do things to please God. Tweet that. Yes, you can. There are some things we can do to please Him. And when you start taking those steps toward the right, taking those steps toward righteousness, taking those steps toward those things that please God, God smiles on that because you're headed in the right direction. Are y'all listening to me? So you'll see holiness. Over and over, over, all throughout. Then you'll see approaching God, how to approach God, what God demands and animal sacrifices, why he, you know, we, we, all of these acknowledgments we'll see. We'll talk about the priest, we're, and we're going to talk about the purity and the parties involved. You want to put that, write that down if you're taking notes. We're going to be talking about the priest, which means we cannot approach God on our own. we got to have some... Jesus is our great high priest. Hallelujah. Amen. He intercedes on our behalf. And we are able to come before the throne of grace because of the blood. Because the blood washes away all sin. The blood makes us whole again. He is our mediator. Are y'all listening to me? Our sin requires that the price be paid. So purity. So when we come before God, amen, we come before God, there must be a sacrifice. There, there's no other way around it. He is the way. He is the truth and the life. 
Jesus said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. Somebody would say, that's awful bias. That's awful narrow. You know what? You're right. <laughs> but if God said it, that's seven. And I'm glad there's no other way. I'm glad that Jesus is the way. Are y'all listening to me? And then those of us who share in the joy of our salvation with God, we are called to be a witness for the Lord, okay? So, now I've given you some overview, some things to chew on. There's so much more to the book of Leviticus, but we want to go ahead and get started because I want to read these 17 verses. All right, I'll be reading from the NIV, the New International Version of the Bible. And again, thank you so much for tuning in. And as we share, we hope and pray that the Word of God is speaking to you. I believe God is speaking to you. Don't try to understand everything. Amen. Don't try to get real deep. And No, no. I just want you to read it with me. Okay? We read it. You ready? Leviticus is the book. It is the book of priests. It is a book that helps us to understand order and worship. Uh, the Levites gave birth to priests. Uh, Aaron is the father of Levites. Of the Levite tribe, all right, they were responsible for the upkeeps of the, of the tabernacle. Uh, they were responsible for sacrifices. They were responsible for order. They were responsible for rituals and carrying out ceremonial laws. They were responsible. They had a great responsibility, okay? They had to dress a certain way, eat a certain way. Uh, they had to pattern their lives a certain way. We saw all of that in the book of Exodus. We'll see more about that even in the book of Leviticus, all right? Are y'all ready? Let's rock and roll. Here we go. The Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting, from the tabernacle. See, God is speaking from the tabernacle. Not Mount Sinai. No, no, no. He is what? Communing with his people. Oh, Emmanuel, God with us. He says, speak to the Israelites and say to them, when anyone among you brings an offering to the Lord, bring as your offering an animal from either the herd or the flock. If the offering is a burnt offering from the herd, you are to offer a male without defect. Stop right there. Now we see immediately that you bring your best. Mm. And how many of y'all know it's time out for just bringing anything before God? We just anything with the church. We just anything. We just anything. And oftentimes people, you know, folk get upset because you get on them because what? They just want to throw anything together. They just have this nonchalant attitude about church and about things pertaining to the church and the work of the church and the worship of the I mean they just projects and I, no, do it right. Call, Ritz Carlton Hotel has a motto and their motto is um, we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. Mm. The church is called to be witnesses unto Christ. We are servants, watch this, serving others. Hello, Big Shot. We are servants of the Most High God called to serve others. When you, put, when you get that in perspective, you ain't got time for a lot of foolishness. Are you with me? All right, here we go. Le Exodus. I mean, Leviticus. 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 Watch this. You must present it at the entrance of, to the tent of the meeting so that it will be acceptable to the Lord. Remember I said earlier, there are some things we can do that God is pleased with. Look at verse 4. Leviticus chapter 1. You are to lay your hand on the head. Remember I said that earlier. Of the burnt offering, and it will be accepted on your behalf to make atonement for you. So the sin that you commit, you bring the animal, lay your hand on the animal, and guess what? The animal, you got it, becomes the sacrifice for the wrong you've done. All right? Now watch this. You are to slaughter the young bull before the Lord, and then Aaron's sons, the priest, shall bring the blood and splash it against the sides of the altar at the entrance of the tent meeting. You are to skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priest, are to put fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. Then the Aaron's sons, which means Aaron's assistant, his assistant priest, priest, 
shall arrange the pieces, including the head and the fat, on the wood that is burning on the altar. You are to wash the internal organ and the legs with water, and the priest is to burn all of it on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a food offering, an aroma pleasing, there it is, to the Lord. So we see the, the procedure for bringing um, your, your sacrifices on behalf of your sin. You see how meticulous God is about the animal. None of the animal is to be wasted. Why? Because the animal now becomes a sacrificial offering. To who? God. So none of, not even the ashes are going to be wasted. All of it has been set aside and consecrated for who? Your, for the sinner. For the, for the offerer. So if I come and bring the animal, none of it is to be wasted. That's what God said. The priest has to dissect it, has to cut it a certain way, has to take the remaining parts. He has to, there's a lot associated with the procedures for you to what? Be forgiven and restored and reconciled to God. Are y'all with me? This is God's order. That's how serious sin is, ladies and gentlemen. Leviticus chapter 1. Verse 10, if the offering is a burnt offering from the flock, from either the sheep or the goats, you ought to offer a male without defect. There it is again. You cannot bring God just anything you want to bring him without defect. That means you bring God your best. You bring him your first fruits. Are y'all with me? You are to slaughter it at the north side of the altar before the Lord, and every son of the priest shall splash his blood against the sides of the altar. Now keep in mind, that the sprinkling of the blood covers sin. Somebody said, why is all this blood? To cover sin. But the blood of Jesus washes away all sin. See? Are y'all listening to me? You ain't getting in if you ain't covered in the blood. I don't care what nobody tell you. You ain't getting in him. No, you can't even come before God if you're not what? Covered in the blood. Mm -mm. You ain't getting in. I'm telling you right now, it ain't going to happen. You cannot bypass the blood. No, because the blood washes, purifies, amen, cleanses us from all sin. Woo, good God Almighty. You ought to cut it, verse 12, chapter 1 of Leviticus. You ought to cut it into pieces, and the priest shall arrange them, including the head and the fat, on the wood that is burning on the altar. You ought to wash the internal organs, and the legs with water, and the priest is to bring all of them and burn them on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Verse 14, if the offering to the Lord is a burnt offering of birds, you ought to offer a dove or a young pigeon. Stop right there. Now, the reason why that's there is highlighting the specific. The specific birds or animals right here is because everybody could not afford to bring a dove. So God made provisions for those who were less fortunate. See? And that would be a bird or a young pigeon. Pigeons cheaper than doves. You know that. I know that. So there were those who were able to bring a dove offering, but then there were those who didn't have much. What are you saying, preacher? But they, God made provisions for them. Everybody can bring something. Everybody can contribute something of value. Please catch this. Well, I don't have nothing to give. Yes, everybody has something to give. God is not going to direct you to come and bring and give. Guess what? If you don't have something to bring and give. And it's not always money. We always say money, 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 money. One of the reasons why we don't bring money is because of priority that one. And I, I'm gonna get, I'll talk about that later. You know, our budget, I mean, our, our spending habits all over, all, they're just everywhere. We gotta have, you know, we just, we just, we live above our pay grade. If you wanna get ahead in life, I give you this ahead in life, I give you this for free. You have to live, you should, let me say that, live under your annual salary. So if you make 40000 a year, and did you not know that the average household income for families in Fed County 
is $17,000 a year annually. So that tells me if I'm going to survive and all, I have, all I'm making is $17,000 a year, I need to live on $12,000. $13,000. $1,000 a month. I, I have to break it down because I have to, I'm going, I'm going to need what is called um, Lord have mercy money, emergency fund. I got to put something away. The old folks used to put it and roll it up in little, amen, uh, uh, in little purses and roll it up in aluminum foil and stick it in the cracks of the wall. They didn't believe in banks. We don't even do that. <laughs> but you got to learn to live, watch this, below your budget. And in addition to that, oftentimes you have to bring in an extra line of income because sometimes you may be managing well but the cost of living is so crazy and so now what you say well I got to bring in another line of income well when you bring in another income stream that don't mean go out and buy a Hummer uh, go, go shopping and you know just go crazy well I'm just going to splurge you're not in a position to splurge yet hello somebody no 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 you have to live within your means what are you saying preacher everybody can bring something if you can't bring treasure, bring your talent. You can't bring your talent, bring your time. Everybody can bring something. I want to ask you a question. What are you bringing to the house of God, to your church, to the tabernacle? What are you bringing? What are you bringing? Or is it all about you? Everybody bringing something to you. Well, that's selfish. Bring! That's what it says. Everybody's bringing something. Everybody's bringing something. Everybody can bring something, but it's only those who are willing to bring something. Many of us don't bring nothing because we're not willing. We don't, we, we don't, it's not a priority. You know, our priorities all over the place. Happy hour and all this other foolish thing. You know, we just, we engage in everything else. Watch this. Verse number 15, we're closing out. The priest shall bring it to the altar. Leviticus chapter 1, verse 15, the NIV version of the Bible. The priest shall bring it to the altar. Ring it off the head and burn it on the altar. Its blood shall be drained out on the side of the altar. He is to remove the crop and the feathers and throw them down east of the altar where the ashes are. He shall tear it open by the wings, not dividing it completely, and then the priest shall burn it on the wood that is burning on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Now, somebody said, oh my God, it's a lot of cutting and chopping up. Sure is. Because sin has a price. Yeah, sin has a price, ladies and gentlemen. Are y'all listening to me? Sin has a price. Major. And the cutting up and the dissecting of the animals and burning them on the altar also, what, aided in what? The animal burning quickly. All right? So you have, again, the animals that were brought for the sacrifice of sin. God spoke to Moses from the inner sanctuary. We're going to review it. I'm closing out. He gave him what? General instructions for the various offerings to be brought. Prior to this, God spoke word from the mountain. But now he spoke from the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. Now, public offerings did exist. But individual offerings were voluntary. Now, this is important. I don't want you to miss this. Sometimes the person wanted to express a self-surrender to God. And they would do that by way of a burnt offering. Worship is voluntary. Nobody ought to coerce you, pump you up, twist your arm, push you, don't wait to get sick. No, it's voluntary. It's voluntary. All right? When God reminded the sinner of a particular shortcoming, that person would offer a sin or guilt offering. Now, that's important because we can't say that God don't remind us of a, a wrongdoing. Oh, yeah, we, we get reminders. Yeah, we just ignore them. We will shake it off and act like nothing happened. But you're going to live with that monster. You're going to live with that guilt. You're going to live with that heaviness. Yeah, you're going to live. You can never escape your conscience. Can't do it, all right? So what the sinner would do, or the, the offerer would do, here it is, right here, watch this. They would bring that offering before the Lord. There was no, 
revival, no special preacher, no special choir, no special occasion, no anniversary day, nothing. They would willingly say, I need to go before God and make this thing right. Can I ask you something? Can I ask you something? Can we talk? Just me. Ain't nobody, just, just us. Is there anything God is saying to you that you need to make right between you and him? Let that sit for a minute. Let that sit for a minute. Is there anything that God is dealing with you? And you say, you know what? I need to go to God and make that thing right. I'm tired of carrying this thing around. I'm tired of, I'm tired, I'm just, I'm worn with it. That's what you see in the first two verses of Leviticus chapter one. Then we see the offering from the herd, the burnt offering or the whole offering. The entire, the entire, the, the whole offering is consumed on the offering. So if you bring an animal from the herd, it was to be a male without blemish. We were just reviewing it. Bring the animal to the front of the tent of the meeting. He was then to place his hand on the head of the animal and slaughter it before the Lord. Then the blood to all the inner sides of the altar. The entire offering was to be placed on the altar, washed and burned according to the regulation. If they followed it, God would accept it. Okay? Then in verses 10 through 4, 17, and I'm closing. The procedures are to follow even if the offerings were from the flock. Although Moses mentioned that a person who offers an animal, whether a sheep or goat from the flock, must do so on the north side of the altar, the same is true of the offering from the herd. Moses mentions over and over again with more precision. The procedure is the same for that for the herd offerings. And that's important. It don't sound like it. Because procedures with God are procedures with God. We want to get in and change stuff and redirect you know, re it and design it. No, there's an order. There are procedures. We just recently uh, increased our usher ministry. And I'm working on bringing someone here to help fine-tune them, to help them to more so minister more effectively. It's not that they're doing something wrong, but what are you trying to say? So that the procedures they learn, they will pass on to others. Are y'all listening to me? The procedures, the pattern of God. We learn about pattern and procedures as we study the Old Testament as it pertains to God's directive. All right? Now, God allowed substitution of a bird, did he not? For those who could not afford a larger animal. So we learn in Leviticus that God made special provisions. So don't you feel bad because you can't give the big tithe. You can't dedicate a pew or you can't dedicate a, a stained glass window with your name in it and a family in there. Don't, 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 don't let that wear you down. Don't, please don't. Because what little bit you do from your heart, God will appreciate it. If it's from your heart with the right motive, I promise you the Lord appreciates it. So he made provisions for those who were poverty stricken and didn't have much and because of insufficient means they were able to join in and participate in the worship service and offer sacrifice to God it touches my heart God made provisions for everybody in his church in his ministry can I ask you a question are you making provisions for everybody to be a part of what God is doing in your ministry Huh? Is, is, are, you, are you making provision, allowances? Are you finding ways to include everybody? Mm. I'm talking about people with a willing heart with the right motive now. Are you find, or is it all about you? Mm. That's important, is it not? The bird offering differed from the animal offering in that the person was not required to lay their hand on the bird offering or kill it itself. The priest would perform that function. The priest would cut the head of the, of the bird from the body and burn it on the altar. And then he would remove the crop with its contents and dispense it on the east side of the altar. The priest had to divide the bird by the wings, making sure he didn't sever it completely. And he would then burn the bird on the altar as a whole offering. The same application applies because it was a little small bird. But it still did what? Atone for the sin of the offerer, the person. 
So we're going to stop right there. When we come back, we're going to talk more about Leviticus. Some say it's a boring book. No, it ain't boring to me. Nothing God has written is boring. No, 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 no. What it is, mindset. And again, we've been so uh, was brainwashed by this world and society and media and what's going on around us that we are now adopting or have adapted to a mindset that everything else is to fit in to the mindset of what's around us. Not so. The church is called to be different. You are called to be different. You are called to have a different mindset. And yes, it's challenging. Yes, it's an uphill battle sometimes. But again, we're being, we're being mindful of what I reminded you earlier. Most of the problems and most of the headaches and most of the issues that we deal with and the wrongs that we've committed, we brought it on ourselves. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Yes, we have. And every now and then you step back and say, you know what, I brought this, I just, well, now you know that. Don't keep bringing the same stuff on yourself. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, you learn and you keep it moving. Hello. Ask God for forgiveness. Get up. We fall down, but we get back up again. Hello, somebody. And keep it moving. I, mean, I don't understand. Amen. People who suffer and go through hell and high water and still want more gasoline. It don't make sense to me. It just don't make sense to me. Horse more gasoline on me. I want to catch on fire all over again. What? That's insanity. No. If you keep doing the same thing and expecting different results, guess what? That's insanity. Not going to happen. Ain't nothing going to change. No change. What God is saying to the people of God here in the book of Leviticus, Leviticus and to us, that you can change. Yeah, I'm going to provide a way for you to. You can be forgiven. You can be restored. You can be reconciled. But you have to follow my procedures. And you have to do it the way that I say. With that being said, we're going to stop right there. My time is up. Thank you for yours. We hope and pray that you've been blessed. I want you to read ahead in Leviticus chapter 2 as we go through the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter. Verse by verse. If you have never read the 66 books of the Bible, this class is for you. And I promise you, if you stick with me, it'll make sense. Amen. To those of you that are looking for a church home, I want to encourage you that you can unite with the Antioch Church family. Amen. You can confess a hope in Christ right where you are. Yes, you can. You can do that, my brothers and my sisters. And for those of you that are near We'd love to see you here at the Antioch Church. Amen. We're not hard to find. We are small enough to know you and strong enough to grow you. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you to be a part of this ministry. It's real simple. You confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. You shall be saved. Let me pray with you. Dear God, we love you. Thank you for this study. Thank you for your word, for your word is true. Now I pray that some soul be saved, heart changed, mind converted, somewhat encouraged on this day to continue letting our light shine in the midst of a dark world. We love you dearly now. Thank you for the book of Leviticus. And Lord, help us to shed some insight as we study your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And they all said amen and amen. God bless you real good. We thank God for you. I promise you, be the Lord's will and the creek don't rise. I'll see you next time.